All right, folks, I'm going to call this meeting of the Little Calumet River Basin Development Commission to order for Wednesday, October 18, 2023. Please set your phones on stun and let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> My pleasure to lead in allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United, States, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Lambert, nice to see you. Uh, we call roll, please. Present. Here. Present. Chair Here. Dave Capilano. Here. Ron Ware. Captain. Robert O'Keefe. Here. Levon Whitaker. Present. William Baker. Present. We have a quorum. Next up is the approval of minutes from September 20th, 2023, which is September 2023 was the 15th anniversary of the flood of 2008, which you can see some green pictures on over there. Have you all had a chance to review any comments, questions, motions? What say you? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from September 20th of 2023. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Be there or not? Roll call vote. Mrs. Lambert. Affirmative. Yes. Anthony Brodnick. Yes. Sarah Dennis. Yes. Dave Castellano. Yes. Robert Ochi. Yes. Levon Whitaker. Yes. William Baker. Yes. They're out there for everybody to see. Uh, go to the website. Those are uh, there for all the way back to how long? Man, minutes from ever? Something, 84. Back to the 80s. Big fan. Um, next up is the chairman's report. Uh, as we go into the winter, believe it or not, this is still a $275 million man made flood control project. That if you get 10 gallons of water for this five gallon bucket, there's going to be a challenge. However, we're far better prepared today than we were prior to the events of September 2008. Uh, it's an ongoing thing, and it's an economic development project that will be with us as a region for a very long time. Uh, we continue to try to work through the issues to make sure it creates a system that works throughout the community and throughout the watershed. Moving forward, we continue to evolve, and now we're starting to focus on some of the tributaries and some of the places that are not uh, high as high profile, but to work with all the communities in the watershed to make sure that we don't have any situations anywhere in the watershed similar to what happened in September 2008. That being said, let's move through the finance report and approval of the claims. We need a motion to be able to move this along. Gentlemen, what say you? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we go ahead and approve the claims in the amount of $1,337,002.93. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Mr. Repay, some of the highlights. Absolutely. Paying some bills. 1.3, that's a lot of scratch, man. Yeah, it's the sort of the end of the season. People are starting to uh, wind some of the projects down. Uh, and I have pictures in my report to sort of document uh, most of these uh, higher paying projects. Uh, we'll start with uh, three hundred thousand dollars from the town of Winfield. I believe uh, Commissioner Gazdecki brought this up as to uh, how they how they come and when they build anything. They haven't built anything yet. They generally are a community that waits till the very end, which and this is the case. Uh, they build three hundred thousand dollars, which is the total amount due uh, to them per our you know, local agreement. I have uh, that project is complete and and uh, sufficient to their yes. uh, standards. Uh, town of Sherville for their Eagle Creek culvert. That's two hundred twenty-two thousand five hundred. That project is complete, uh, and and the uh, road is now open. Lake County Parks, one hundred thirteen thousand five hundred. Uh, that was uh, our interlocal agreement with them to knock down the environmental center buildings as well as uh, ripping down the old fence. They haven't put the new fence up as of a week ago, uh, but but this is a partial uh, payment for them. Division of Nature Preserves, $97,092. It's the reimbursement for work that is occurring uh, through our interlocal with Indiana DNR to maintain the Hobart uh, Marsh area. And then we have a little bit, I mean, they're not super small, but they're smaller. Uh, as far as fixing the Harrison Street retaining wall, that was a, that was an issue that was brought up by the Corps that wanted to fix in the last inspection. So we've done it. HA24, uh, which is the uh, Sluice Gate that's located by the BMV off of Indianapolis Boulevard, uh, that's uh, 13042 
And then we replaced uh, the bridge planks uh, on several bridges uh, prior to what is going to be required as a bridge inspection for all pedestrian bridges uh, that we have crossing over the river. We have to do those every five years. Uh, and another one I'll just leave with this is, is the 19,742 for the deep water watershed. Uh, in my report to you, uh, they will have or should have uh, Turkey Creek and Big Beaver Dam Ditch uh, ladder, uh, I guess, uh, tributaries complete of that model uh, in December. And then with the remaining Deep River uh, Burns Ditch done and complete in spring of 2024. I think I've hit some of them. If you got some, anybody I, have any questions for Mr. Repe about paying the bills? Mr. Chairman, I have a question for, yes, Mr. Sir. for Mr. Wickland. Um, I work for the Division of Nature Preserves and represent the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. There is an invoice for $97,000. Do I recuse myself from this vote? I would say recuse yourself from the board again. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Repe on the uh, invoices? Yes. Mr. Dan, I know on the project tracker we have the Hobart Marsh mitigation, a two hundred grand. Is that for the year? That's uh, no, that's uh, they do their year by uh, it with the biennial, which is a hundred thousand dollars every year is what is budgeted for maintenance and upkeep of that out there. <clears throat> but we only spend ninety seven thousand. So, so when their fiscal year ends, what is it, July thirtieth? Are you or June thirtieth? Their fiscal yes. year ends June thirtieth, and so they have up until that. We'll have another year. draw against that. Then. Right, there will be a second year. Okay, correct. And then what happened with Cassie's budget on the plank replacement? Uh, we, I put down the planks that I thought were necessarily need to be removed. Uh, Garcia and Cassie believed more that I was being too conservative. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Either now we got a motion in the second. This is Lambert. Thank you. In favor. In favor. Yes. Anthony Farmer. Yes. Derek Nimitz. I recuse myself from this vote. Dave Casalon. Yes. Robert Ochi. Yes. Levon Whitaker. Yes. William Baker. Yes. Paying the bills. Mr. Repay moving right along. What's going on in the field? Um. No, 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 good. Good job. Um, so I, I'm just going to go through because you like pictures, and I'm just going to go through basically what's going out there. This is a sort of a recap. We completed we completed all the work in Hard Stitch as far as the major uh, clearing of the problem trees that we found. Um, that will likely be the last time we're going to need to go through it, assuming that we continue with the stabilization work that we're doing through phase three now that is currently in permit and then we'll go four or five but I, you know it's, it's a big number eventually but these are the type of problems that we see you saw the call that's collapse you see the head wall here that's collapsing with the erosion which ultimately leads to the backyards and everyone else uh, falling in so that's hearts ditch uh this is the hidden lake culvert replacement this is the one that took the place out in winfield uh, the completed work, I didn't go out there for the before necessarily because it's just a completed thing, but it's, these are the, the culverts that were installed. This is, if you remember, there was a lot of press about it, but this is also the dividing line between Winfield and Maryville. So it was a, it was cooperation between both uh, Winfield, Maryville, and, and, and our money. Are those the structures right there? Correct, in the water afterwards. And then this is the completed... <clears throat> Excuse me. This, this is the completed road. You see, uh, you see them over here on the left. See them over here on the right. They were upsized a little bit uh, to make sure that it didn't impact any, anybody negatively to the left, which is downstream. To the right is south, and that's upstream. Are they going to put guardrails there? No. So nothing's going to prevent somebody from driving off the road, crashing into the new structures. Stay off your phone. <laughs> okay. I mean, how many roads do we see that all over the place? This is Saruman Woods. Uh, as you see, Crown, the grass, Point. Crown Point. This is uh, the grass growing in. You see the structure there in the distance. That is in the northwest corner of the pond. Uh, the pond now is completely uh, dug, and now they're trying to 
uh, attach the infrastructure. This is the long view of it. They haven't put they didn't put the grass or the seeds down back here at the south portion just yet. But as you see, everything's starting to fill in now. And then the last part is they have to lay all this great uh, culvert that will soon happen. I asked for an update on a schedule. I'm still waiting for that update from Structure Point and from the city of Crown Point, who's running the project. Uh, Kennedy Avenue Sandbar. This is a good one. Uh, we contracted with uh, <clears throat> Maryville Stormwater. They have the Marshmaster. There was no Marshmaster available. I think Derek had them all under lock and key. or they didn't, like There was not anyone. So Maryville, as you know, we went to their place, had a Marshmaster, and it was a, for a small amount of money, or a decent amount of money for them to go out there. It helped us put better eyes on it. It helped us put a better survey together. Um, but this gives you a perspective of how much silt and sediment is there now. I'm in the middle of the river. Uh, it's inside the, the actual engineered look, structure. And I'm looking east. So the, what you see there is the Kennedy Avenue Bridge. And you start seeing the now. Well, it's not going to be more long because there's going to be a bunch of fragmites popping up any time now. So we have to hurry up and get in there. And then this is looking south. Oh. Or not south, I'm sorry, west. Wow. And you have, the, this is the pedestrian bridge. The, the high transmission line and be just beyond that is the is the uh, pipeline corridor. This is one of the culverts. This is if I was looking directly north into that pond at Optimus Lake, uh, you see the beaver has has basically uh, burnt a trail in, in the system, getting up and down the, the thing. And so this is a before. This is an aerial. That, You're gonna fix that, right? Because we'll get written up for that. Right. We do. So we're, we're putting together a plan with between uh, John Garcia and Mr. Paul Daniels uh, to find a way to uh, make it as efficient as possible to build up the levee wall, levees uh, without transporting too much dirt out, which is a cost factor, uh, because we know that it will happen again. But in the short period, you know, we think we can get some years out of it uh, to allow for the bridge to eventually be built, and then we have a better sense of what we need to do to, to shape it. So this is a aerial photo time lapse over time to show you what time uh, lapse. This right. it's a time lapse. So I, I'm getting technically savvy with Come a lot of other people. So you Kennedy have the bridge on the right, pedestrian bridge on your left. Right is east. So you start seeing it how it fills in over time. Nice. It also has something to do with the time change with the Summer and stuff, but you see, you see, you're starting to see this sandbar build up out here. Well, right there, where your arrow is going toward Kennedy Avenue, that yeah. is what we're under monitoring right now, right? We're going to end up. I should pause it. Actually, this is where you saw that picture of the beaver going in and out. This is the outfall of Optimus Lake. The goal is. If you follow the cursor, is to take this and basically run it straight across and take out all this material and push it along the bank. I'm talking about the previous project we did where we had to set oh, yeah. it What happens with that contract? So once we get the right to remove the sediment under the old guidelines, we were told we had to mitigate for it. Under the federal law, Rule 31, which is we are a federal flood control project. We don't have to mitigate for it, which is what we argued eight years ago. We don't have to mitigate for it. We 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 simply just have to dispose of it. But the but four or five years ago when we moved stuff, mm -hmm. we had to monitor that moves dirt. Right, which is right here. For invasive species, correct. So is that contract still in place and are it's we still done. monitoring? We're done monitoring. It's a five year monitor. Thank you. How many invasive species came in? Some. But it's gonna be the it's gonna be the ones that are typical for a river. You're not gonna be able to stop them. There's only one because it kills everything else. What is it? The blue, purple loose stripe was I think was the the killer. Is that, is that the one? That, and then we had some fragmites, but but anyway, there's your there's your time lapse um, video. So so now with an area, go back to that angle you know, just from where the outfall is from Optimus from. The outfall from Optimus Lake. Yeah, I'll stop it here. And then going 
west towards the pedestrian bridge. Yep. You're not planning on taking any of that material? Yeah, we're going to take some of it, but we're not going to go beyond the pedestrian bridge because there are so many pipelines that run in this area uh -huh. that it could, I mean, you don't... Well, so you're eventually going to have to because you can see it's turning into a bottleneck. So at some point, you're going to have to pull the Band-Aid off and do something. Correct. Over there. So right here, the, it up. right now, we already have material built up here, which we are going to have to get someone in to get it out, which we have someone. We're waiting because we want to time it to get all the material out of here, too. So we're going to try to get both places, this one and this one at the same time, probably in the next month. So would we have to involve the railroad for that one, or is that just a pipeline concern? No, it's just a pipeline. And how many different um, ownerships, I mean, and ownership entities are there in that particular location for pipelines? Issues, one, issues, stick. Stick. Mm -hmm. You've got BP, you've got NIPCO, okay. you have Wolverine. Hey, everybody. You have, I think you have AT&T Fiber Optic. You got, yes. you got stuff. Uh, moving on to Eagle Ridge Culvert, we paid the bill for this. This is the after, uh, this is the, the culvert that they replaced. This is what it, Better than that tin thing. Though. Yeah, the tin thing rusted away. So this is my pictures of it. It had better pictures, but I, I want to have a guardrail. Yeah, no guardrail. We drive it on our culverts, man. The after road. Oh, so you have the thing. So here, this is the uh, K-Mart break, which is, should be complete. Uh, by this time or the time we meet in November, um, everything's slowly but surely. We've got some minor issues that we got to deal so with. So when that thing gets going, could you do a video to see how it works when yeah. it's churning yeah. and all the cool stuff and absolutely kind of lawn chairs come out of there? <laughs> Beach ball. So here we talked about it uh, in work study. It was the Hobart Beaver Dam. This wow. is this is the dam from afar. Uh, having been out there this morning, it's approximately four foot differential from where you see this duckweed to the lower spot. And if I hit this next picture, you'll see a better sense of what that is. I, I, it doesn't even give it that good of pressure. Route six is up here for for your viewing pleasure, but so we're facing north. We're facing north. This is there's probably four feet here. There's another beaver dam here that probably is holding back a foot or so. And then there's a last one that's right off of six that's probably holding another foot. And then for the public record, just, I'm sorry, Dan, no, is that this is on private property and right. not with no easements available for access. And it was just brought to our attention from a resident who uh, rides a bike nearby and found this four foot differential. And is this, Rank up there with the largest beaver dams you've seen since it, we've been doing this. It is. It's a. It's roughly a hundred feet long, and I think, like I said, at least four feet. The only one that's like a resort. Yeah, the only one that matches this one is the one that is between Grant Street and Chase Street, with as far as length and height. And by the way, that one is slowly making its way back. We've got to deal with that one, but um, it wasn't a. It was. He wasn't on his bike. He was a neighbor that lived upstream of this that was having water come onto his property more and more. Uh, uh, his sump pump kept on going off and on. And, uh, and the water's not moving. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. And how many, is it a mile away? His, his property? Yes. More than a half mile, but not probably quite a mile. Because he has to, from where this is, it goes underneath a culvert, underneath a bike trail, and then you go a little bit. So, as the, and as you go south from where the dam is, how far south do you go for residents that are impacted by this dam? A few miles in both east and south. So, to Cleveland Street at least. What would happen on a major event? Would these beaver dams just over top? Or? Well, they would over top, but then the beavers would then start getting well, smart and using it as an opportunity but, to keep on pushing more stuff against it. They keep on getting higher. But so there's the watershed has to go through a culvert to get to this private property? The water has to get through a culvert to, yes. And so how much of that culvert is now obstructed by the water level in this the dead? It is uh and more than it's more than three quarters full. They they've been measuring it because that's where about the neighbor lives. And he said it was 33 inches full at earlier this spring, it's now 48 inches full. How big is the culvert? I, I 60? 60. I think it's 60. 
I mean, I have more pictures. So what are the recourse? What is the action from the, what do we, what did the, the city of Hobart do? Someone needs to petition the Lake County Drainage Board. So Bill's point, there is no easement. So they need to force the issue with the drainage board to make the landowner uh, allow that to be removed. The landowner doesn't have to remove it at their expense. The petitioner can have it removed at, at the petitioner's expense, but the landowner has to allow him access, him or her access to it. It's yeah, we've seen that movie. It's probably the more one of the most difficult situations because normally when we get called, people want things removed or they need our assistance. This landowner, I believe, does not want that, or we know that he doesn't want it. They believe they want more beavers to be have it, have the habitat that they do. <laughs> I won't speak for them generally because I so will anybody flood if there's a major event? If only one definitely flood. could because what would happen. I can see from being there is County Light Road could flood. Uh, that could be impassable because just not enough water. If you're filled at 48 inches out of 60, right. a decent rain, now all of a sudden, where's that water going? Well, it's going to go. Can you put that top. back instead of me looking at this corner? Oh, sorry. You want to look at another one? No. All right, sorry. Hold on. Oh, and you have video, you have time left. I'm sorry to bring up this one. Come on. You're just going to It's like a TV. Come on. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. All right. So we'll get to the questions for the, you know, the big, huge flooding issue, and then you're going to the birds. Well, I wish I could get Joe on this, but so the question: What? What do you want? The video? Do you want the? No, no this is just leave it the way. Do you want to see the video? No, I. So just, what, what kind of? So you have a foot of freeboard, maybe with the road height another foot. Correct. Maybe a little bit more than a foot. What's the elevation change from that level, water level to the? At the end be. of all the at the end of all the beaver dams, where it drops off. Estimated, just having been out there today, probably five to six feet hmm. of a drop in probably a half mile. I mean, when this if if and when can't somebody just clear like state of emergency or so if there's an event and there's a real issue, who's going to go out there and do something with the culvert that's now three quarters. Well, it's not the culvert that's the problem. It's that it's that I understand, thing. but if that's not removed, I'm assuming the culvert's still going to be full. So when it gets to be 100% full and there's issues, mm -hmm. who responds and how does that? What I would suggest that you maybe have a conversation with the uh, individual who's a part of our group from the city of Hobart and kind of just put that out there to start thinking about what what's going to happen. With it's going to be reactionary. That's it is like, oh, I see I'm not a big fan. I'm not either. Trust me, I, I'm not. And we, we we got this phone call at or email at three o'clock yesterday. And, and it. we were there, but we we have to work through the county's process on less thing. And then well, that's going through all of that bureaucracy just to talk to the people in the Holbert who are going to have to show up there when all you know shiitake hits the table. Well, they were out there with us. I mean, they saw it. Oh. The council for that. So, you know, what they're going to blame us when it, it doesn't work right. So that's all I'm asking. We will. We will paper. We will paper, paper the that uh, the deal. Thank you. All right. Anything else on that one? That's going to be a fun one. That's brand new. I want to know about swans and. Well, you know, this is another last minute thing. As we're not last, sort of last minute. But myself and Derek were both copied on the email that Humane Indiana had to recover these six trumpeter swans that nice. are which are rare or endangered to Indiana. Endangered. Um, and they found them on the expressway. Uh, their their test. Mormon? Yes. Their nest was off of Martin Luther King between Martin Luther King and I-65. These were the juveniles that walked free and decided to get on the expressway. They saved them, they rehabilitated them, and they emailed us as to could we let them go in your place? And I said, fine. Yeah. Um, Where's the place? Oh, off of Grand Street. Oh. And so that is what they did this morning at around 9.45 or so oh, cool. with the help of NISCO and Humane Indiana. And we, we allowed them on our property. And so these are those six little, you already saw the video, so it's really not going to be as exciting, but it is very exciting. Let's see. I got sound. All right, sorry. Anyways, they they see I like this. 
I got time lapse and swan, Bill. Um, okay. um, they need yeah, technology and uh, repertoire. I know. I'm really disappointed that the, the, the so, campus is in. And so are they going to track these animals or you can't? And so I, don't wanna, gonna, I don't want to tell you why you can't because I'm sure there's a good reason. You can't ban animals unless you have a particular person that is a master at that. And it's a, it's a, it's a government regulation. But the whole point is. Yeah, there's a joke, but there's a, so they need, I think they need a thousand feet to take off. Uh, so that marsh area is perfect for them. They need to figure, they're figuring things out and they're right. eating where the runway is. And where the yeah, are. hopefully they don't see a fox or coyote. That's so I guess my question is, and this maybe is for Mr. Nimitz, is that, is it usually protocol to have some type of recurring visits to the area to see if they can stay there? I don't know that there's a protocol for that. My understanding is these birds are particular to marsh habitats. Um, they are found in the area. They probably were attracted to a lot of the work that we have been working with Wetlands Initiative and the Audubon Society to restore it. I, I, I kind of think of it as the field of dreams. If you restore it, they will return. Thanks. Now, are they migratory, just out of curiosity? They are. Yeah. Yes. If, so. if if the water, I was told today, if the water freezes, they will leave. Similar to eagles, if, if there's no food source. But if I'm going to tell you, that area tends not to freeze because there's constant water flow in that area from the storm water. So um, they like to eat the mud or whatever they're eating. But I, I'm, I go out there quite often. So it'd be curious. And I told the people that uh, we're out there today that I would keep an eye on them to see if I uh, have, have noticed them. So, But that was my morning. Really excited about it. Yeah. And feel the dreams. That's a pretty good analogy. Right. Thank, Thank you. So that's all I've got. No more birds. All right. Anything else from the monthly report? Um, not that I can. Got it. Any questions for Mr. Ripe? What's going on in the field? Also, just as an aside, during this uh, portion of it is we're working on budget. We're working on projects going into uh, 2024 as well. So, um, Keep that in mind too as you move through the process. Will we need to mow again? Maybe. Uh, looking at the forecast, next week is supposed to be sunny. Halloween's supposed to be uh, cold. And then the following week's supposed to be really warm, so we may do it again. I did have one last note uh, for the bridge, the pedestrian bridge, and the rail bridge over Manor slash, uh, what's the one on, on the hand side? Whatever that is supposed to be placed uh, November sixth. So they're placing the rail bridge and the pedestrian bridge that's now relocated off of Manor mm -hmm. between Manor and between Munster and Hamlet. So the old Monon bridge that they took down and put in the South Shore. The South Shore tracks are in now. They're going to go back and put the Monon pedestrian. Yeah, bridge but with, back. A, with a bigger with a bigger span. If you remember the the Monon ones all had the big concrete limestone right. and the con limestone. So, uh, piers. These will have piers that span it. Right. They'll still be in the river, but not in the channel. But they're placing it. Their their plan is to do it November sixth. In case you, it'll be a big thing, right? Oh, well, it's going to be a it's going to be a big thing. There'll be people out there. Of course, well, the Audubon were they doing some work on? Uh, Send us an email, will you please, Dan? Uh, yes. What's that? I will. All right. No, I'm. The Audubon, were they doing some work at the work they were putting in the... Uh, yeah, they are. Here? They're putting in a... Uh, what uh, what kind of... It's doing the water to flow. Yeah, it's a restrictor, Level. It's a restrictor plate, like you say. Is that, so they're, they're, they, Passion is actually doing it for them. Okay. Are they done with it or no? No. I just saw a picture today at our o &M meeting, and they're still... they got to put the wing walls in, but they're farther along than what they are. So they're going to be able to control the water in that area a lot better than... Hopefully, and, and they sprayed the frag bodies off of Klein Avenue. Yeah. And was there another structure they were putting in at MLK? They already put that one in off of Georgia, okay. and that one's complete. Okay. Now, the one at the in the island, that's going to be completed this construction season. Yes. Okay. It should probably be complete by the end of this week. And are they done then, that whole group? The, what do they call it? The collaborative? Are they done for this calendar year? Done with. I don't with spraying, I know they I know they finished spraying. I don't think they have a controlled burn or anything planned that I'm aware of. I know they sprayed between Georgia and Martin Luther King. That was about three weeks ago. 
they're really working on these structures now. Oh. The one that uh, Tom has just mentioned, and the one off of uh, uh, Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. But then they're they're still also looking for planning purposes uh, off of Marshalltown. So Dunn is not. They're 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 working in these two areas as the original areas, but then they're looking to help design the area between Martin Luther King and Marshalltown, Marshalltown Terrace. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Repay on what's going on? Whatever happened with the truck driver that <laughs> overturned the semi? Did, did they get charged with any mis? You know, I didn't get the police report yet. Uh, the officer said that he would give me. I he, he called me and I, I reminded him to give me the police report. So I would turn that over to our attorney at that point to see. I mean, I don't know what our damages besides a couple a frame gates and and some rutting, but I mean, is it is it worth the rutting? And we could show that in pretty pretty simple. So. I mean, I'm happy that he didn't do as much damage, and I'm happy that the recovery team that that were, was out there didn't do as much damage as I thought they would end up doing when I went out there the first night. Nice. Well, that's good. All right, anything else for Mr. Repay on this agenda item? Moving right along. Update from the Army Corps of Engineers. Mr. Repay. Yeah, they they uh, informed me that they would have all the stuff that we needed to uh, for the administrative and real estate crediting by October, the end of October. So, I did you get that writing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I did. So they've got strongly worded. Uh, in, no, not strongly yeah. worded. Just average worded. End of October for all paperwork. What we were told, we asked them. We asked them. This isn't getting the e-paper, is it? What's that? This isn't actually getting the paper. Well, it's going to get to the paper, yes. If, if they come back with no issues, then it, you get the paper. Uh -huh. And then you can have the party for celebration or whatever you want. Like All right, so that's the best we're going to get from the Army Corps of Engineers. Is there a new colonel coming in next year? Or? Well, we, we got a new colonel, and I don't remember his name, and I apologize, but we got a new colonel in July. So this is our fifth or sixth colonel? I say, is this fifth or sixth? I think it's sixth. Sixth colonel. Yep. Uh, probably you're getting old. You never will. We'll need that to tell me. I'm just going to go get a drink of water. <clears throat> All right. Um, then moving right along, other issues, new business. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 2023-13, establishing the policy by which members of the Little Cayman River Basin Development Commission may participate by electronic means of the communication, subject to uh, final draft and approval by attorney, executive director, and chairman. There's a motion and a second. Second. And second, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Uh, Wicklin, real brief, uh, what's this all about? Uh, the law changed. And uh, in order to comply with the law and the changes, uh, we need to prepare this resolution. So we're going to have a resolution that has to do with Zoom and tech and the world changing. So uh, we're going to basically put into writing what we've been doing for how long now? A year or two? Is there a motion and a second? Any other discussion? Mrs. Lambert. Thank you. In favor. Yes. Anthony Brodnick. Yes. Sarah Dennis. Yes. Dave Capilano? Yes. Robert Ochi? Yes. Yes. William Baker? Yes. Mr. Right. Chairman. Yes, sir. Okay, you can't hear me. I've been having trouble with my audio. I, I apologize. You, Thank you. Mr. Chair, a uh, question for uh, Dan. Yes. The, uh, I, I saw in the minutes uh, that Anthony asked about uh, inspections in March. For next year, are you are you being moved up? They're, they're moving them in to April, I thought. March, late March, early April. They haven't finalized them just yet because they have a staffing issue that they need to address and a conference they need to go to. So we're moving them up, which is going to cause us to hopefully get a late mow in here before yeah. it gets too late. That's why I was going to ask this commission to got Becky asked in early. Okay, that's all, Mr. Chair. All right, next up is statements to the board from the floor. If you want to help us make sure things do what it's supposed to do, please come up to the podium, state your name and address, and let's go. Once, twice. 
Well, all the way out here, not even talk. Okay, so uh, all right, well, let's go through it. Since I always forget, Mr. Brodnex, I don't know if you can hear me, but I see you're on mute, mute. So anything to add, sir? Nothing to add this time. Mr. Whitaker. I want to thank everyone for coming out as usual. We had a pretty good, I would say, year with projects, and uh, we did some project planning for next year. And uh, just looking forward to what is to come. That'd be all. Thank you, Mr. Wyshlinski. Nothing to add. Mr. Gazdecki. I just thank everyone for their uh, attending tonight's meeting. Appreciate taking the time to see what's going on. Mr. Nimitz. Nothing to add. Mr. Ochi. Nothing to add. Mr. Castellanos. Yes, I'm uh, with uh, Commissioner Brock, um, uh, Commissioner uh, Whitaker said. I'd like to compliment the staff for the fine work that they did up uh, into this year and hope they continue it. But in uh, closing, I'd also like to uh, give a uh, condolence out to the uh, Jewish and Christian and American citizens that's over there in the uh, Middle East, and hoping that the conflict will end, not that our prayers are with them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wicklin. Nothing to add. This is Lambert. Yeah. All right, folks, next meeting is going to be in November 15th, third uh, Wednesday of the month. Check the um, website for details. Uh, we need a motion to adjourn. If you so move. So moved. And a second. Second. This is Lambert. I'm not going to let anybody discuss that. In favor. Yes. 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 Dave yes. Robert yes. 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 Thank you very much, everybody. Be safe. See you next month.